strings and numbers. Let's kick it off by talking about strings. So strings are simply sequences of characters and they are widely used in programming. You want to download a bunch of files from an FTP site using a Python script? Well, you'd have to use a string to tell Python the link of the FTP site. Would you want to create a table in Python? Again, you would use a string to name your columns or your rows. Strings? Well, of course, they can be stored in variables. Just like this. I'm gonna store three strings in three different variables here. Let's say variable file name equals weather 1901. Variable ta table equals temperature. Variable year equals 1901. Strings are always enclosed with quotes, as you can see. In this case, I use double quotes, but single quotes can be used as well. Notice the last variable year. 1901 is maybe a number in our perception, but Python recognizes it as a string. And the reason for that is that you are declaring it in quotes. Uh, this means you cannot perform mathematical operations on that quoted number. And Python knows you are declaring the numbers when you write them without quotes. So if you want to declare a number, you go straight away without using quotes. Let's say real year equals 1901. And look at this. And that gives an error because Python is trying to add up a string with a number. Instead, if you try to add up the other variable we just created, you get what you expected. And that's the sum of the number 1901 with 1. Well, you could also add up strings if you want. <laughs> you can do that using the add operator. For example, let's say file name plus an underscore, which is a string, plus table. And we have a string. Now, when you use the plus sign for strings, we call the process concatenation. Ignore what I said earlier about adding up strings. I lied. <laughs> yeah, so we concatenate strings. And here we concatenated three strings. The string contained uh, in the variable file name, the underscore string, and the string contained in the table va variable. And there as well, the result was a single string. Now, strings are just a bunch of characters. Uh, there are no subtypes of strings. Numbers, however, can be of different types. Two of the types to be mentioned here are integers and floats. Integers are like all numbers, but they include negative numbers as well. Uh, the number stored in the variable potato price we created earlier is an example of an integer. And a few words about floats. Floats are decimal numbers. The amount here holds a float number. And so does the potato version, a new variable I am just creating. You can of course check it, if you don't believe me, you can check the type of your uh, variable values. Yes! In most of the cases you will be using floats for your values. But you could also have to use integers for certain data, such as number of people, for example. It doesn't make sense to have 3.1 persons, so you'll have to use an integer. You could also run into certain scenario where you really have to use an integer. Say you want to mul multiply a string, and to do that you'd use the multiplication operator. Let's say the string by times 2, bye bye. And yeah, see you in the next lecture.